Um, so what uh, this uh, study is about is the discovery uh, of a new uh, gene fusion in prostate cancer, an advanced disease um, around the gene called uh, KRAS, uh, as the title suggests here. Um, just a little bit of background uh, about KRAS uh, itself. Uh, KRAS is actually one of the most well-studied uh, cancer-causing genes uh, in general, uh, as suggested here. Um, it's a small uh, GTPase and one of the most well-studied cancer genes to date. Um, before the study, there have been other uh, types of mutations associated with uh, KRAS um, um, called activating point mutations um, for the most part. So what this study discovers is essentially an alternate mechanism for activating uh, this uh, cancer-causing uh, uh, gene called uh, KRAS. Um, and we discovered um, K this um, uh, gene fusion in metastatic uh, prostate cancer uh, mm -hmm. using a bioinformatics or computational approach, which I won't go into details for the purposes of this uh, press conference. Uh, but what we have here um, is a molecular anatomy of the gene fusions uh, that we identified. And essentially, this is essentially a, um, a rearrangement of, uh, of genes that come together that shouldn't be together, uh, whereby you have this gene called a UBE2L3, a ubiquitin E2 ligase, that gets fused upstream of the uh, gene called KRAS, which is a cancer-causing uh, gene. So this is an alternate uh, mechanism for activating this particular gene. Um, and we found it in a metastatic prostate cancer cell line called DU145, and this is essentially measuring that fusion product here. Um, and we find it specifically in uh, subsets of prostate cancers and uh, we ended up validating that using conventional molecular technologies uh, called fluorescent in situ hybridization and find that it is a relatively rare um, uh, rearrangement in prostate cancer, about 1% or so, but appears to be actually enriched in patients with advanced uh, disease or advanced metastatic prostate cancer in about two out of 60 uh, patients uh, harboring rearrangements of the KRAS uh, locus. Um, so to show that this gene fusion is indeed involved in cancer formation, uh, what we did was introduce uh, the gene fusion itself into benign uh, cancer cells. So we used a number of um, uh, cancer cell uh, models, uh, both in vitro as well as in vivo. When we actually introduced uh, the gene fusion into benign uh, cells, it actually caused a cancer-like phenotype. This happens to be a foci formation assay uh, showing that when we introduce uh, the fusion into benign or normal cells, they have a cancerous uh, phenotype. Similarly, when we take a prostate cancer cell line, a metastatic prostate cancer cell line that naturally has this fusion called, again, D145, and knock it down, uh, these uh, cells uh, lose their uh, <coughs> cancer-promoting activity in terms of cell growth and uh, invasion shown in this assay here. Uh, and in animal models, when you introduce th the gene fusion into benign cells, they form two. <coughs> And when you actually knock down the gene fusion in a metastatic prostate cancer cell that naturally harbor uh, this mutation, uh, you get a slowed uh, growth uh, of these uh, tumor xenografts. Again, credentialing this as an oncogene in, um, in prostate cancer. So this adds to a larger schema of molecularly subtyping prostate cancer, which first began with our discoveries that a majority of prostate cancers harbor gene fusions, uh, of the ETS family, a, tra an, uh, a cancer-causing transcription factor. Uh, more recently, we identified that about 2% of prostate cancers harbor uh, fusions of the RAF uh, kinase. And in this particular study, uh, we identified that about 1% of uh, uh, patients with advanced metastatic prostate cancer uh, harbor uh, fusions or rearrangements of the KRAS, uh, KRAS uh, gene. So just some take-home points to leave you with here. Uh, Gene fusions or rearrangements are thought to be the causative molecular alteration in prostate cancer. Uh, formation of these gene fusions is an alternate mechanism of actually activating KRAS, which was known to be activated by point mutation. Here we're showing that it can be activated by rearrangement or gene fusion. Uh, D145 metastatic prostate cancer cells, as well as uh, metastatic prostate tumors, uh, harbor uh, these gene fusions, although they're rare. Um, we went on to show that indeed this gene fusion is an oncogene or a cancer-causing gene in both in vitro as well as in vivo uh, models. And uh, broadly speaking, 
uh, the diversity of gene fusions and other molecular alterations found in prostate cancer likely explains the diverse behavior uh, of prostate cancer in general in humans, some prostate cancers being aggressive, others being indolent and slow growing. So what we think about in the future is that gene fusion subtyping of prostate cancer patients uh, may help in predicting prognosis, who has more aggressive disease, who has an indolent disease, as well as uh, most importantly in helping in uh, uh, predicting therapy uh, for patients. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to invite now uh, Dr. Levi Garaway, Assistant Professor of Medicine in the Department of Medical Oncology at the Dana Farber Cancer Institute to discuss uh, this, this paper. So I, too, am pleased to be part of this inaugural press event for cancer discovery and to discuss this very interesting paper by Dr. Chenayan and colleagues. So as Dr. Chenayan already alluded to, RAS is essentially uh, the classic oncogene. It was the first demonstrated uh, human oncogene back in the early 80s. And in fact, this slide uh, points out something that my colleague Matthew Meyerson, who's often here, likes to note is probably the most mutated codon in the entire human genome. So this is codon 12 of, of, uh, of essentially all the RAS isoforms. And if you add up the mutations in human cancer, this probably would be the top, if not, uh, if not the top, one of the top. But so mutations, though, have been the story of, of RAS family uh, events. Never before have we seen rearrangements to occur in this category of oncogenes, classic though they may be. So right away, this is a striking observation that uh, this very well-known oncogene can in fact be dysregulated by not just point mutation, but rearrangement. And it's also uh, noteworthy, although perhaps uh, in hindsight not totally surprising, that it would be prostate cancer in which this event would be discovered, because prostate cancer is a cancer which